Hello, everyone. Um, first, I would like to thank organizers for <laughs> inviting me. Sorry, I'm a little bit. Okay. Oh. Um, so, I'm working as a project manager in um, the um, Department of Public Health at INSERM and University of Toulouse in France. And the work I'm going to present um, actually is a close, very close collaboration with uh, uh, a number of people that are named here. Some of, several of whom are um, working at the um, Public Health Institute in Rome in the publishing unit. So I will be talking on behalf of them all. Um, so why, why is such a concern for bioresources? Uh, first, a definition. We mean by bioresources um, any biological collection of, of data, samples, or tools that is uh, scientifically uh, documented and uh, structured. So lots of research actually uh, rely on the use of bioresources, and uh, this is especially true in the biomedical um, community. Uh, just to give an idea, approximately 300 million of uh, tissue samples are stored in the USA and about 20 million uh, of such resources in Europe. So it's a, a huge uh, potential information for research, or provided it is shared and accessed to. But sharing, as you said, doesn't mean uh, just put, putting, on, uh, putting files on the web. It's, uh, it requires work, quite a lot of work, a long work, which is poorly recognized and which doesn't help sharing. There, there can be many, several blocking factors to sharing. Um, in some cases, it's just, it might be institutional ones, such as ethical restrictions or related to intellectual properties or these kind of things. But most of the time, it's uh, even more basic. And actually, bioresources are not visible enough. So they're not known, as you say. And um, they're difficult to trace. They're not acknowledged adequately. So it is difficult to assess their usage reliably. And uh, uh, so as a consequence, it's poorly, it is still poorly shared. Um, there's no visibility, no uh, rewarding mechanism possible. And uh, in other words, there's a lack of some indicators, a lack of a unique bioresource identification system to trace them precisely, a lack of standards for bioresource citation in the scientific literature, and a lack of indicators describing efficient usage and management of bioresource. So, this is the context in which the Bioresource Research Impact Factor, the BRIEF, initiative was set up by um, Anne Cambon Thompson, the leader, uh, as part of several uh, FP7 European projects. So with the idea of creating tools that will promote a philosophy of sharing and facilitate its practice. Uh, more specifically, um, the brief aims at creating adequate standardized two tools, two sorts, standards for citation acknowledgement of bioresources in scientific articles in order to trace their use on the web, and also brief indicators to establish frequency of bioresource use and evaluate their impact, so that will be based on metrics and that requires identified bioresources. So the brief um, started as an international uh, working group. Initially, it was about 135 members from 20 countries, more than 95 institutions, all over Europe mainly, a little bit in North America. And it was gathering a lot of different skills, which was very helpful. Biobank partners, computer scientists, geneticists, epidemiologists, jurists, lawyers, bibliometricists, Matrices, journal editors, librarians, and so on. And these people actually um, 
helped us to identify a priority tasks and uh, to create working subgroups accordingly. So that, that was actually five that are listed here. So the first subgroup uh, actually is, uh, was in charge of the identification scheme for bioresources. That means explore, exploring um, uh, the already existing um, identifiers that would be relevant for bioresources. The second, brief, uh, the second uh, subgroup uh, was in charge of uh, defining parameters to take into consideration into the metrics. And I will, be, I will come back a little bit on that one uh, uh, in a moment. A third subgroup uh, was uh, in charge of the relation with general editors, and I will detail uh, that one in a minute. A fourth brief subgroup uh, is in charge of providing recommendation for the brief uh, procedure, the brief implementation in access and sharing policies. And at last, uh, a last group uh, in charge with the dissemination activity and the link between all the groups. So as part, <coughs> as part of the brief journal editor's uh, subgroup work, uh, a number of actions were developed to sensitize editors and their association about bioresource and brief issues. And this was achieved through targeted surveys to dissemination of brief in key science edition conferences, such as the peer review conference in Chicago, the EASE conference, European Association of Science Editors every year, and also by, by organizing, organizing uh, specific workshops with journal editors and experts. And actually there were two, one in Rome in, in um, 2013 and one very recently in Toulouse, that were really, uh, really helpful for, make, for making things move forward. And there was another part of the work, of this sub work, which, uh, that consisted of uh, working out a guideline for uh, citation of bioresources and in launching an open access, a new open access journal for describing bioresources. And I will be talking about those two tools now. So the COBRA guideline uh, has, been is, has been developed to standardize the citation of bioresource in journal articles. It was published in Giga Science uh, last year and uh, is available in the reporting guideline section of um, the Equator, Equator's website. It specifies uh, how, so this guideline specifies how to cite bioresource in different sections of a scientific article. And actually the heart of the, of the guideline is uh, in the lower part of the checklist, uh, where it uh, specifies how each bioresource should be cited as a reference, the reference section, which format is reported in blue here, with first the, bio the ID, if available, otherwise the bioresource name, the acronym, if available, slash the organizational network partnership, slash the number of access, the date of last access, and a tag, the bioresource word in brackets, if the bioresource is really used in the article, reported the research. No tag if uh, the, the bioresource is only referred to, not used in the article. So the um, guideline is there. Um, now we are in the implementation phase, which is quite a hard task. And we are supported in this in, by a key in, um, infrastructure in our community, actually the BBM, BBMRI ERIC um, infrastructure, which is the, sorry, the um, European infrastructure for biobanks. And they uh, included it in their uh, usual services, the, pro the, the services they provide. Uh, and they have agreed to include it also in the material transfer agreements and the data transfer agreement as a request. So that, that is uh, very helpful. So we are in the implementation phase, so that means um, 
the guideline now has to be used, otherwise it is, it, it's useful. It has to be implemented. So we need endorsement at various levels, really. We need institution, endorsement at institutional levels, such as universities, national institutes, infrastructures like BBMRI. We need a scientific endorsement as well, such as in the scientific society, administrative endorsement, educational endorsement, good practices could be taught to PhD students using bioresource, for instance. And we need a lot the endorsement by the editorial community, as they can be very influential, like they could include the guideline, uh, the recommendation in instruction to authors or to reviewers. They can write editorials to sensitize the community and so on. Um, there's a second tool that has been developed by this uh, subgroup uh, uh, in close collaboration with Ubiquity Press. It's the launch, the launch of an open access data journal um, dedicated to the publication of description of bioresources. So namely, it is the open journal of bioresources. The aim uh, was really to increase the visibility of bioresources by offering the possibility of an access of an open access marker paper, and also to provide bioresources with DOI, so an easy way, although uh, indirect way, to, uh, to have an identifier. Um, how it works briefly, uh, the uh, OGB paper, uh, papers features short and concise description of the bioresources in accordance to, um, to a template that we have developed upstream uh, that describes how the bioresource is preserved, what methods are used, how it can be accessed, and so on. So it is peer-reviewed, and actually the, peer re the review is mainly to check that the template is well completed. It's open access only, it's fully citable. Um, citation of, um, of these papers, of these articles are tracked and uh, displayed on the the article page, along, along with the um, social uh, indicators here. Uh, the articles are sent to, to the scholarly indexes, so that <coughs> to, make, to ensure that they belong to the scholarly record. So it's a way, uh, actually, to, um, for bioresources that have no identifier to get a sort of identifier, but an indirect one. And I have to say that um, there are on ongoing discussions between uh, uh, BBMRI, ERIC, and DataCite to see how DOI could be um, directly assigned to bioresource, to, to physical samples, and how all this could be connected. But this is not done yet. But this is one example of the, of the article. So now a few words about the brief parameter subgroups work. So the idea there is to uh, build metrics that will evaluate the use of a bioresource. So the first step was to um, assess, to assess 11 parameters of a bioresource for measuring its impact as, fair as, as fairly as possible. Um, so an online survey was uh, created and was set up and uh, addressed to uh, different biobanks and answers from uh, 33 biobanks actually uh, allowed to um, define a number of parameters relevant that, that are grouped now in four categories. I indicators of research productivity and sustainability indicators of sample data value, indicators of workflow and efficiency, indicators of collaboration and visibility. And those parameters were then classified according to their availability and traceability. Were they measurable, easily, machine readable, often documented or not, and so on. So actually that's where we are now. So we need to now to fin finalize the parameters to test them in other biobanks and to weight them. And then we will be ready to, to build the, um, the algorithm. So actually, we, uh, 
we target two uh, metrics, one that will be based on machine-readable parameters only, which will be a sort of uh, standard quick standard brief, and another metric that will be based on the <coughs> same parameters, plus specific parameters provided by bioresource managers, so no, not automatically available. And these, the second kind of metrics could lead to a different specificities according to what each structure wants. So there will be, at one point, need for a piloting implementation of the brief metric in scientific journal. And we will need, at that point, uh, the collaboration of the, the publishing world uh, again. And uh, the, the need for editors and experts in metrics collaboration. So um, the brief tools are fostering, actually, and will foster easier access to data and samples to optimize the use and the sharing and to um, recognition of data producers. Um, it's been developed in the biomedical community, but actually it, it could serve as a reference for other communities. It's not, it could be the same logic for others. And, uh, and uh, for sure, um, we cannot progress alone. We definitely need other communities to uh, endorse and to help uh, the, um, at least the guideline to, to spread and to be used. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laurence. Uh, and we have plenty of time for questions, if, if there are any. <laughs> Hi, I was just wondering how this differs from RRIDs, or whether it, there's overlap there. How? Sorry, I'm um, So the resources, so um, the, res the research resource identifiers, and that project, and... and um, the the subgroup, that yeah, subgroup. How, how this differs to that, and whether there's overlap. Well, actually, the, this subgroup, we, 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 did, we, did, we don't intend to have a brief identifier. That was the initial idea, but we for, forgot that very, very quickly because there's a lot <laughs> available, actually. So the idea of this subgroup, this subgroup actually is uh, providing, trying to provide a sort of a guidance uh, for the, this community of uh, biobanks and to tell them what exists and what is the best um, suitable for their bioresource. So this is sort of a synthet synthetic table document to provide this guidance. Okay, that makes sense. And I had just one other kind of comment was, it was interesting the use of the word impact factor in the title and uh, it's, you know, yeah. the choice of that, considering impact factor and open access is kind of contrary. Well, actually it was the first idea. Now we, we, we're moving towards brief impact bioresource research impact framework because this is more what we actually are doing. It's a, a set of tools. Impact factor was really to um, appeal the biobank community because they are very receptive to this <laughs> word, <laughs> actually. Hello. I'm not a biomedical researcher myself and I really learned something today and this is that it really takes time and deep thinking um, and discipline specific thinking to set up something like what you just described and my question is very brief when you started with it did you think that it was so complex <laughs> well <laughs> I didn't actually I uh, but um, the leader of the project I think she knows she knew but she doesn't mind <laughs> she, <laughs> She just, she's very, I mean, courageous for this, and she will, uh, the more it is complex, the more she gets interested, and the more she can um, attract people. But it is, I can confirm, it is very complex. And for one simple reason at the beginning, it's just that all those researchers participating, participating to this project, they do that in addition to their own work. Because, you know, it's, we don't have a lot of money for this. It's really an academic, um, project and uh, no real fun to it. It's really, you know, part of different European projects. 
So it's it's you know, it's, it's very interesting medical practice. So, so just one comment. Um, I learn more and more that open science is not just about changing people's mindset. It's also organizing a really complicated process. Yeah, I can only agree with you. Any more questions? <coughs> I have one. Yeah. <laughs> when you talk about bioresources, uh, are they uh, more often or not connected to journal articles? Are they connected to journal articles? Yeah. Well, they are used for research, so they are in journal articles, but not uh, explicitly. So it's very difficult to trace them. That's all the, I mean, that's one of the points of the brief project. Um, because you, where to trace them? I mean, if it's not, if they're not identified, if they're not acknowledged, or sometimes they are in one article but not in another one. So if you want to trace them systematically, you won't have an exhaustive result. And for many of them, actually, they're not, they not even uh, acknowledged sometimes. I'm thinking of a hospital uh, by um, collections, things like that. It's, uh, it's, it seems to be a, a real, it is a real problem. And that is one of the aim of the brief. But, uh, um, of the maybe I misinterpreted the term by resources. What, what is it? Is, is, is it? is it research data? It, yeah, it, it can, could be. It could be. But it could be other things also. Well, it's, the, the usual definition we have is any scientific collection, uh, any collection of samples, that's for biobanks, data, tools, biological, uh, scientifically structured and documented. So with data, a lot of data associated. So they are research data. Yeah, they, they can be, uh, you know, um, rough data, primary data and they can become research data. But, but if they connect it to a journal article, that connection is explicit, explicit in, in the, the, it, the database or the catalog. Or yeah, it can be for record. some of them, yeah. It is for some of them, but not for all of them, of them. And we want something to be more exhaustive and systematic. Okay. So I, I guess that, that makes it more difficult to, to find the data if it's not connected to the article, right? Yeah. Even more. I can yeah. confirm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yes. Thank you. That was a, also a good presentation. And I'm actually addressing my question more to the chair, I think. Because I noticed this, the, the title of the panel has this rhetorical question, a model for all. And we've heard three very interesting disciplinary specific uh, presentations. And, and I, I guess, you know, the question I'm asking myself is, do we even need a model for all? I think we've heard some very interesting commentaries from the audiences on these three discipline specific models. And I wondered if the intention was indeed to conclude that the uh, could be a model found in these in these discipline specific initiatives. Thank you. Well, I don't know who, who put you know the title on on, on this session, <laughs> but okay. Uh, do you want to answer that or? Okay. <laughs> I'm just tweeting about it because the model is not a model that uh, fits all. But what I really learn is. The model is to um, acknowledge that if you really want to do it good on the disciplinary level, then it takes hard work and a long time. And it's a complicated process and to organize this process needs to be acknowledged. And that should be done by discipline-specific experts because you know how you work as researchers. And this is not something that the information infrastructure institutions can do for researchers. This can, be, can only be done together. And this was our idea to put those three papers together and I'm really glad about the outcome. I think the model could be, for instance, a guideline, but the guideline would be specific for a community. 
it cannot apply to all communities, it's just impossible. Even in, within one community, it's very difficult to, to create the guidelines, I mean, to develop the guidelines. So I can't imagine it can work one for all. Mm. Thank you very much.